Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Checking the post. First condition brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction. Check them out at dpsconstruction.net. Also, characterchronicles.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my prediction show for Nebraska versus Illinois. The Huskers have an opportunity to beat a ranked team inside Memorial Stadium for the first time since 2016 when Tommy Armstrong led the Huskers to a 35-32 victory over the 22nd ranked Quack Ducks of Oregon. I say that with all due respect. Also, this is not a fun fact, but just it is what it is. It's the first time two ranked teams have played, have played inside Memorial Stadium in over a decade. It's been too long. It's Friday night. It's the 400th consecutive sellout of Memorial Stadium. I anticipate another electric atmosphere, something similar to the Colorado game. Also, this is like a mega show, I, I say with all due humility, but I'm pretty excited. Stay tuned. We got Thomas Fedoni, all right? I'll be interviewing him on the second half of this show as well. But if you're with me and you think Nebraska, forget that. If you think, and I'll get my prediction at the end of the show, if you believe Nebraska is going to beat Illinois, on Friday, then smash that like button. And when David Pollock joined the show yesterday, all right, he smashed the like button verbally. He said he was, said if he could do it physically, he would have on Nebraska going 4-0. and And then he even said 7-0. and And he said a lot of things that kind of surprised me. But here's the thing. David po Pollock is very knowledgeable. He is legit an expert. He clearly knows a lot about Nebraska football. And he's watched a ton of the Huskers this year, and he has no reason to be anything but honest. If you missed that interview, go check it out. It was a fun, enlightening interview. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't done so yet, also make sure you subscribe to this channel. Got a lot more fun surprise interviews coming up, just like Pollock, just like Fedoni, just like a lot of the ones we've done up to this point. I'm gonna keep doing them going forward. Also hit and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. All right, here's what was fun about the Fedoni interview too, I should mention. He tends to, you know, kind of keep things close to the vest. I felt like he opened up a little bit, so stay tuned for that. All right, Illinois. As I've learned about this team throughout this week, they got a bigger, more physical defensive line, but a smaller group of linebackers, in all honesty. They're allowing 275 total yards of offense per game. Their defense is, that's 33rd in the country, 123 yards on the ground, which is 59th in the country. But here's what's surprising to me. Okay, when you look at their offense, they don't appear to be that great at running the ball this year. They're just not. Okay, they're in the bottom 50% of teams in America, which is not typical for Illinois when it comes to rushing. They're 74th in the country, average 153 rush yards per game so far this season. It's their quarterback, Luke Altmeyer, who's kind of carrying their offense so far. He's completing 69% of his passes, averaging eight yards per pass, and has six touchdowns with no interceptions. He has a passer rating of 164 so far this year, and he appears to be the strength of their offense. But I remember last year, with all due respect, I called him a turnover machine. And I felt like he was a big advantage for the black shirts when we went into Illinois and beat them. Again, I think on a Friday night, I'd have to go back and double check that. He's, his play has improved vastly, at least so far this year. Okay, he, last year, all right, he had 10 interceptions and just nine starts at quarterback. The Ole Miss transfer threw a pick against... Nebraska in the black shirts, and then Illinois also had two more fumbles throughout that game a season ago as well, but they're taking care of the ball much better this year. They're averaging 33 points per game, all right, up to this point in the season. Now, Nebraska's offense is averaging 34 points per game, tied for 45th in the country. They're averaging 250 passing yards per game, actually a little bit more than Illinois, who's averaging 225 pass yards per game. And the Huskers are averaging 171 rush yards a game as well for 421 total yards of offense per contest. That's good for 49th in the country. All right, here are my keys to the game, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, this is like number one, by the way. I actually circled this. There's two other keys, but this is the one I circled. All right, win the turnover battle. Now, in Illinois' Two games this year versus FBS opponents, which is Kansas and Central Michigan. They've actually been outrushed in both games. They were outgained significantly by Kansas, even though they were able to beat Kansas. Now, this is a Kansas team that went on to lose to UNLV the next week. Now, people like it, UNLV might be pretty good. I guess we'll learn and find out about that. Illinois was able to win both of those games because they won the turnover battle in both of those games as well. They had a 4-1 to edge against the Jayhawks when it came to the turnover edge. All right, and they're, they have a nine to one advantage. They've forced nine turnovers and only given up the ball once this entire season. That's 
good for second in the country when it comes to turnover margin. All right, Maryland is number one in the country in turnover margin. Now, Nebraska, plus three in turnover margin so far this year. That's the best they've been after three games since 2016. And if you go back real quick and look at our recent history, not pretty, but going to do it quickly. A season ago, we were minus six in turnover margin. 2022, minus one. 2021, plus one. 2020, what a wonderful year that was. We were even. 2019, plus two. 2018, minus five. 2017, minus two. 2016 was the last time we started 3-0 and and we were plus six in the turnover department. So far this year, Nebraska's plus three. Whoever wins the turnover battle in this game is going to have a huge edge in the scoreboard. Now, I, I, I pretty much would be shocked if whoever wins the turnover margin doesn't win this game, especially if it's Nebraska, but I'll get to that. All right, the other thing to keep an eye on, there's two other things. Keep an eye on our tie ends, especially Thomas Fedoni. I, I feel like he's ready for a breakout game. And I had these keys and my prediction ready before I actually knew I was going to interview Thomas. So it worked out perfectly that I got to interview him this week. The six foot six Fedoni is going to have good matchups versus some smaller Illinois linebackers. I just like the matchup. Okay, smaller Illinois linebackers versus a 6'6 athletic tight end. Potential matchup problem for the finding of line. I look for Marcus Satterfield to attack those smaller linebackers and establish the run early on in the game, which should help set up the play action pass, which is perfect for tight ends. All right, so we'll see what happens. Number three, my third key. We're, we're more athletic than they are. We are. We're going to be faster as a team. We're going to be more athletic than they are. Okay, we should have the edge in the big play department. But here's my key. Our defense has got to get off the field. We can't allow them to extend drives and just stay on the field forever. That's my third key. Now, the over-under for this game is 42.5. The spread is 8.5 in favor of Nebraska as we sit here right now. Anyways, the computer simulations. Now, the computers will simulate each matchup every weekend in college football over 20,000 times. And throughout 20,000 simulations, per these computers, Nebraska won 69% of the time. Illinois won 31% of the time. Here are my final thoughts. Friday is a short week. That always helps the home team. Memorial Stadium's 400 consecutive sell sellout, and I think the place is going to be rocking as well. I kind of feel similar about this game as I did going into the Colorado game. I not only like our chances to win, I like our chances to cover. My score prediction, David Pollock almost stole mine. I had all this done before I interviewed Pollock, before I knew I was gonna interview Fredoni. Pollock said 27-14, Nebraska. Close, I said 28-13. Nebraska. I got 28, 13, Nebraska. And to be honest with you, I really don't care about the score as long as we just win, baby. All right, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors before we go to the Fedoni interview. Shout out to DPS Concrete Construction. They are concrete experts, retaining wall experts. There are no better experts in the state of Nebraska, surrounding areas, Omaha metro area. Check them out at dpsconstruction.net. Also, Bonzel Pool and Spa. All right, in particular, their hot tubs. Pools are awesome. Saunas are awesome. If you want them, they got them. If you need them taken care of, they can do that. But go check out their hot tubs and their hot tubs that are on sale. Now, let's chat with Thomas Fredoni. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm joined by current Nebraska tight end, Mr. Thomas Fedoni. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How you doing? Dude, I'm glorious. All right, right out the gate, I got to ask... You know, being one of the leaders on offense, what do you think the offense for Nebraska, you guys have done well so far this year, and what's an area you'd like to improve on going forward the rest of the season? I think, you know, we start off, each game we started off pretty strong, put, put together great great drives, and be able to, you know, put some points on the board, uh, you know, give, give the give the team some, you know, some energy, being able, being able, to, being able to go out there and, you know, kind of start fast. Uh, I think we've done a good job with that. Um, you know, I think we've been pretty efficient on offense, uh, but, you know, obviously things we need to fix, I think in my opinion, is uh, being able to play four quarters. Um, you know, we've we've done a good job as, as starting fast and having, you know, a good first and second quarter, but we need to do a better job as an offense. Um, being able to have, you know, competitive endurance, you know, the whole, the whole game. You're obviously in the huddle with Dylan Riola. You're in the locker room. I'm curious, what is he like? Because he seems mature for being a 19-year-old. What's he like, and is he someone that you all see as a leader on the team already? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, he's obviously really mature for his age. I think I think he's done a really good job uh, being able to come in here and take a role on of being, you know, a starting quarterback as a young kid. And, you know, in a big, con big 10 conference, is not something easy to do. Uh, you know, 
it to be pretty mature to be able to, you know, just come in here and, and learn the offense, learn the whole offense, and, and do it, you know, at, at a high level. Um, and, you know, I think even though he is young, I think, you know, a lot of us do respect him and, you know, see him as, as a leader on the team for sure. Passing game has obviously improved. From past the from last season to this season that we're currently in. All right, and Illinois linebackers. As I look at them, your your particular matchup. They're a little bit smaller. The linebackers are for Illinois. All right, I'll point that out. You don't have to. But my question is, do you get a little bit extra excited for the game this Friday versus Illinois and and the matchup potentially uh, versus the linebackers? Oh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. You know, they play a lot of man, so we we'll have to be, you know, just gonna go out there and. You know, win win all the reps that I have. You know, be able to give 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 Dylan an open target and someone to throw the ball to. Uh, you know, I, I say that you know I'm, as a tight end. You know, I feel like I'm always open just because you know size and length and ability uh, and everything. But yeah, definitely excited. You know, for the for the game this weekend and in the matchups we have for sure. Coach Rule said earlier this week that Illinois' defense is doing some things differently this year versus last year through their first three games are playing a little bit better to this point as well. As you watch them on film and you're preparing for the fight in the line eye, what are some of the things that you've seen from Illinois' defense so far this season? You know, last year they played pretty much all man. Uh, you know, a lot of one-high man, um, you know, a little bit of zero here and there. But this year they're playing a little more zone than they did in the, in the years past. You know, they'll get to like some a, a form of like, you know, cover two. Um, but, you know, they'll make it look like man. So really each person on their defense has – has a great understanding of where they need to be, um, you know, in order to, like, you know, make it look like man and then spend, their, you know, spend a cover two or, you know, some form of, like, Tampa two. Uh, so that's one thing that they've done a really good job of this year. It's really mostly, mostly they're, all they really do is they play that type of coverage with, you know, a little bit of man, a little bit of zero, um, you know, They'll play, you know, a little bit of three sometimes, but that's kind of what, what they've done better, um, you know, in my opinion is what Coach was talking about, I think, um, is how they get to, like, that zone coverage while making it look like man. All right, so you guys are plus three in the turnover margin column this year. Illinois has the advantage nine to one in the turnover margin column, uh, largely due to Kansas having four turnovers in that game versus the Jayhawks that Illinois yeah. played. So how do you guys continue to protect the ball, take care of the ball, and win that turnover margin? Because I feel like that may be as big a key as anything going into the game versus Illinois this Friday. Yeah, um, you know, obviously that, that, that's, that's something we talk about uh, as an offense, not just this week, but something that we've always talked about, um, you know, throughout the year, is, you know, being able to win the turnover battle. battle um, you know, obviously a huge stand football. It's, it gets overlooked, uh, you know, just a lot of people don't look at that. Really, we just have to focus on, you know, you know, carrying the ball correctly. That's our money. That's our, you know, that's our, that's our you know, key to winning um, is making sure that we don't have any turnovers. So, make sure that we take care of the ball. And, and then on defense, obviously, you know, make sure that we try to punch the ball out. You know, get, turn, get turnovers, get the offense back on the field to, um, you know, get some points on the board. I want to go back to something you said earlier. You talked about competitive balance for four full quarters. Okay, I'm curious what Matt Rule's message has been to the team this week and how you guys are trying to improve on that going forward. Really, his message, you know, the way I, the way I took it is, I mean, it's pretty simple, I think. You know, we just have to do a lot better job of being able to play for a full four quarters and not just, you know, come out there fast and, and punch them in the mouth or, you know, score points because, you know, that, that's what's happened the last few games. But, uh, you know, that's not, that's not always going to be the case. So, you know, you, you don't really know what's going to happen, um, I guess, depending on how the game flows, but if, you know, we get punched in the mouth right away, we have to be able to respond, you know, in the second half and make sure that we uh, have good competitive endurance at the full four quarters and not just the first, second quarter. Kind of obvious, but... No, that makes perfect sense. Sometimes the obvious things get overlooked, which is why they don't always come to fruition. So I'm glad Coach Rule's focused in on that with you guys this week. Now, most people know you were a highly recruited guy coming out of high school. You had a couple of major injuries, injuries right out the gate, unfortunately, but now you're back, you're healthy for a second straight year in a row. I'm a guy who's had 10 major surgeries in my own lifetime. All right, obviously I'm a little bit older. And my question is simply this, what's that journey been like for you up to this point? And how do you feel going forward for the rest of the season? It's definitely been, you know, a crazy journey, not the journey that I uh, initially envisioned, you know, when I started off my college career, but um, I wouldn't take it back, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think I've said it before, but I do think I'm a lot stronger mentally and physically um, and, and better from it. I, you know, got to learn the game a little bit more, um, so everything, you know, kind of made it slow down a little bit better. That type of injury happening twice, um, a lot of people, you know, kind of count you out, and I think that was something that made me push myself a lot harder, um, and, you know, still still do to this day, but I feel really, really good, really honestly, probably the best I've felt in a long time, um, you know, uh, at, at the size I'm at, I'm, you know, I'm 250, 255, and 
I'm the fastest I've ever been, really, um, and strongest I've ever been. I mean, obviously, it's a little different in week four of the season, but, you know, b- before the season started, that's kind of my numbers were really looking really good. All right, what do you feel like you've done well so far this year, and what's an area you'd like to personally improve on going forward for the rest of the season? I think I've done a good job is, is creating, you know, creating holes and, and blocking for the running back, um, but something I'd like to just obviously get more of yards and catches and stuff like that and being able to help the team, you know, with, with my receiving ability. All right, man, it's a ranked matchup. You guys are ranked 22. Illinois is ranked 24. The first matchup of two ranked teams inside Memorial Stadium since 2011 and over a decade. What would beating Illinois, starting off 4-0, okay, okay what would that mean for you guys and you guys as a team? You know, I think obviously it'd mean a lot. I think it'd be huge for us as a team in getting momentum, uh, you know, heading into the next few, you know, weeks of the season, you know, uh, Purdue and then Indiana. And I think it just, you know, give us a close shot, a slingshot, a little bit of momentum, you know, obviously a win's a win and all wins help. But, you know, a game like this, um, haven't had, like you just said, a, win, a ranked win in Memorial since what you said, what, 2011? Last time there were two ranked teams that played each other was 2011. Yeah, it's crazy. So just being able to get a win, you know, in this type of situation, I think it'd be huge for us as a team. And, you know, just, just prove to, you know, us as a team and, you know, that everything we've, we've done and put, put the work in so far is worth it, you know. All right, I want to thank you for taking the time to join me, Thomas. I truly appreciate it. And I just want to let all the fine folks at home know, if you haven't been to CaricaChronicles.com, you should check it out. Yes, we have a lot of writers. We've got nine. We have a lot of shows and podcasts. we got like 27. But it's not just about the amount, it's about the quality of content. We have a lot of great writers, great shows. The vetting process was long and lengthy, and I'm glad we did it because there's a lot of great shows if you haven't checked them out and articles being put on characterchronicles.com. A lot of other great content as well. Ashley Spitznoggle's art is on there. We've got Fan of the Week. We've got Where Are They Now segment picks from the last and most recent games throughout this football season. Highlight videos, interviews like this one with Thomas Fedoni, John Bullock, Tom Osborne, David Pollock. Go check out characterchronicles.com. Hopefully you have a whole lot of fun in the process as we've had a whole lot of fun putting it together. And I got three questions for your fine folks at home. Let me know your answers in the comments below. Number one, all right, what's your final score prediction for Nebraska versus Illinois this Friday? Number two, I feel like Mr. Fedoni is going to have a breakout game this week. I love the matchup. I love what he can do. Do you feel like Thomas will have a breakout game this week? And number three, what's the biggest key? to Nebraska beating the Fighting Illini and going 4-0. All right, Thomas, good luck this Friday versus Illinois. I appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you having me on. All right, until next time, Husker Nation, go Big Red Nose. Remember to throw the ball.